Hello and welcome to the final part in our Build From Scratch series of our Office Relocation Request app. Today we're going to be looking at one final way that we can extend the application that's being built through the use of something called connected systems, but also looking at how we can actually expose some of the things that we've built within Appian through the use of web APIs. So let's get into it. We've started, as you've seen before, in our design view that shows us some of the objects that we've built already. But down at the bottom here, you can see that we've got those connected systems and the web APIs, and those are what we're gonna be focusing on today. Now, in one of the previous sessions, we used Salesforce as a way to back some of the records that we were building and effectively using it as a way of servicing that data from Salesforce within Appian that we can then interact with it through the use of forms and our workflows. However, we can also use the connection to Salesforce as an actual integration to allow us to query it through other parts of the application, perhaps through interfaces or through the workflows themselves. Now, integrations come in two parts. We first will have the connected system that effectively sits on the bottom of our connectivity to those other applications. That handles all of the authentication. So this is really useful for administrators if they don't wanna be going and giving API keys out to everybody, they can just create that one connected system, but allow multiple integrations to sit on top. Perhaps you have an integration that acts as a query, an integration that will write some information, and another information that might have a different writing mechanism, perhaps a push instead of a post. So we need to start off by creating a connected system to that third party application. And as I mentioned today, we're gonna to be using Salesforce, but you'll notice we have a library of different integrations that can be set up here. In addition, to those standards as well. So you can use either an open API or a HTTP connection to third party applications that we may not have built a connected system for. So we'll select Salesforce as our starting one. Now there's a few bits of information that we need to populate here. First of all, we need to put in a name for this. So we're gonna call this SFDC connection. We'll then need to put in the URL of our instance and we're gonna gray out some of this information. So don't worry too much that you can't see it. Obviously you'll be able to configure and grab this from within your own Salesforce instance. We then need to pop in a client ID. We will also need our client secret and we then need to pop in our credentials. So we need a username and we need our password and finally our security token. And if we just give that a quick test, there we go, the connection's been successful. So we know that we're now authenticating successfully into our Salesforce environment. So let's go straight through and actually use that within a new integration. This is just effectively jumping straight to the step where we're in the object build view and we're able to select new integration. Of course, we can set our permissions as we do on all objects within Appium. And we're now at the create integration stage. So we've already got the connected system pre-populated and you'll see that there's then a series of operations that are available here. So if you were to say, get a third party application that we're trying to connect to, and it might have say a Swagger file, you would then be able to import that when you're creating that connected system that would then define all of the actions that you can do, all the operations that you can do with that particular API. Now for the Salesforce integration, we've got things like creating a S object, queries, etc. We're gonna keep this one simple and just do a query. So that will allow us to query data out of our Salesforce instance. And we can put in the title there so we can get get contact info and hit create. And then this will then take us into our editor for that particular integration and allow us to do things like testing it and also putting in any additional paths or parameters, query parameters that we want to use into that particular integration. What we've got here is the operation listed there again, but then which object we want to query. So as I mentioned, we're doing this one to get contact information, but if you think about all of the objects that are available within Salesforce, there's things like account information, there's contacts, there's leads, opportunities, pretty much anything is all available through this integration. So if we just search for uh, contacts and have a look, we can see there's the contact one. We can then apply some filters. So this is really useful if you want to scope down 
the amount of information that's coming back as part of the interface, uh, the integration. Obviously, if you were using this within an interface or within a workflow, you might need it to be completely open and not have any filters, but this will obviously reduce the time that it's taking for that particular integration query to run. Uh, so if we just do a quick test, we should get some data come back. Obviously, it'll take a moment just to run that query, depending on how much data is there. It's showing us that there's too much data there, but if we click into the records, we can see some of that information. So we've got the dictionary list here of one particular contact named Jack Rogers. So that data there is coming live from our particular Salesforce instance. And as you know, with using objects within Appian, if you're looking in an interface, for example, you could call this using rule bang and then the name of our integration. Now we can put in some additional properties here. So we could add in rule inputs, which we can then add into these filters. So let's say we want to query based on, uh, let's pick one of these properties here, maybe based on the person's email address because we want to find all of the related contact information about them. So we could put in a field there called email. We need that to be a text property. And then over here, we can then pick which field we want to filter down on. So we should be able to find email in there. There we go put in an operator and actually let's just very quickly copy Jack's email to test this out. And then for our value, we're just gonna call that rule input. So in expression mode, we can type in RI bang email, save that. And then if we do a quick test, if we pop Jack's email in there and run a test request, we should get just the one response come back this time. There we go, one response, and that's got all of Jack's contact info. And if we were calling this within a interface, we could then nest through that dictionary list to pull out the individual properties that we wanted. So it might be that we create a summary style interface that then has those key values that we wanted, maybe Jack's contact details like phone number, his name, his address, um, anything else that's on there, such as um, job title, related information, all of that stuff can all be extracted out. So that's one way that we can expand an app and application and have it call out to other applications to get information in. And the same would be true if we were writing that information out as well. But what about if we actually want to get information that's within Appian out of Appian into another application? If we come back to our design homepage here, down at the bottom, we've got something called Web APIs, which as it says here, is all about exposing data and services of Appian to outside systems. And there's a couple of different use cases here. The most common one is imagine that you've integrated Appium into a legacy system. So you've gone through, you've built out maybe an RPA connection into a legacy tool or a legacy database, or you've done that database connectivity into Appium. And there's data in that system that you need in another system. Of course, you can just build an integration between that legacy system and your third party solution, but there might be additional processes that need to happen as part of that. So you can see here, we can create web APIs from templates that allow us to do things like querying data from within an Appium record type. So if that legacy system is built as a record in Appium, we can query that information out. We can even start processes. So if you remember in a previous episode, we created a process model that allowed us to create a new office relocation request. Well, that's a process. It's a very simple one, but it's a process that can be initiated from systems outside of Appian. You don't have to be logged into Appian to press the button. So we can expose that as an API. Particularly useful if you've got web-based applications, maybe people are filling in forms on your company website and you wanna receive that data into Appian to trigger a process. That's the sort of thing that you can be doing from here. And of course, there's other pieces around such as extracting documents that have been uploaded or uploading documents um, and doing management around uh, records and data stores as well. We're gonna keep this really simple today, and we're gonna do a query record type to be able to expose the data that's been added into our office relocation requests. Maybe perhaps you've got an internal intranet site and you just want a list of all of the current ongoing office relocation requests. We can expose that data and give a read-only view of that. So first of all, we need to define which record we're gonna use. So if we just look for our tag, ORR, and if you remember, we had a few that we built, but we're gonna look for requests because that was our primary record. And we're gonna show this as live requests. 
And we can put an endpoint, which is basically just the path that we want to have on the URL. So we're going to call this um, live request just to make it a bit easier to identify and then hit create. Again, security is applicable here. So we can define the users and groups and the roles that they can have on this particular web API. And then we'll land on another screen, similar to the integration screen that we were just working on, but there's a bit more expression language in here uh, because ultimately what we're doing here is giving the flexibility to configure what this web API can actually do. What um, filters does it have on there? So you'll notice in terms of the um, query record type, we're pulling back a maximum of 50 in each batch, but we can then put further filters in here or further parameters using the query parameters and add in any additional header properties that we need as well. So we'll keep this super simple. Let's copy this particular URL. And what I'm gonna do is just bring up a API testing tool, in this case, Postman, and pop in my URL. Now I've already configured my username and password in my authentication properties on Postman, but obviously you would want to make sure that you're maybe setting up a dedicated API user for this particular web API that then only has access to the relevant data sets in addition to the filters and the query parameters that are set on the integration itself, on the web API itself. So if we hit send, we should then get a result that comes back. There we go. So if we put that in a pretty format, you can see we've got IDs one, two, three, et cetera, that have all of the data from our particular record. So if you remember, we had the old office location, the new office location, any notes, the date of the move, the employee ID that was coming from Salesforce, and then all the related information around uh, who it's currently assigned to and created by, et cetera. So that being a raw format, that could then obviously be manipulated um, into whatever tool that you're going to be showing that in. And the same is true if we wanted to create this as a request for a new office relocation and creating a web API for a process model. So let's very quickly go through that step and show how we could have external applications initiating a process within Appium. So if we hit into start process and then look up our office relocation request process models. Very good point there though, that we need this stored as a constant first of all. So let's very quickly go and create a new constant for our process model. So new constant. We'll call this start new request. And we need to look up a process model and our process model is OR and create or update request. Hit create. Okay, and now if we create a web API to start a process, and just look up our constant that we just created, and we'll call that one new office relocation. We'll pop a endpoint on there just to separate it out from the, any other requests that we might make. and set our security. And then we'll again be brought into that editor that allows us to configure any additional properties or parameters into that particular web API. Okay, and you'll notice this time, um, it's a little bit different in terms of the information that we're passing through. Um, so there's some properties around what body of information, because this one we're doing as a post request. So there's additional parameters that we might need to be adding in. Now at this point, we would need to go and check what inputs that particular process model has. If we were just to execute this right now, it's potentially gonna fail because it might be asking for additional data input. And obviously it would need that additional data. So it needs to know what that old office is, that new office um, address is, the user that's requesting all of those properties that we'll be filling in the form, we'll be able to pass that through in our body and initiate the process from there. So to wrap up and just to remind ourselves what it is that we've been building, we're focused primarily on building a simple application to replace effectively a spreadsheet of relocation requests. 
We've built out an application that allows us to submit a new request, filling out a form, and then track requests that are currently underway. And then we've looked at expansions of those. So being able to add in additional plugin functionality such as Google Maps, but also extending out our application to integrate into other applications. So in today's episode, we've covered off building out an integration into Salesforce, but additionally also being able to expose our application through the use of web APIs. We hope you found this series useful. Please do make sure you like and subscribe the Appium Community channel to be notified of new videos as and when they come up. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.